I had to ask to have a co-host tonight, and I could think of no one better than Nikki Hodgson, for reasons she's about to explain. Nikki. broadcaster, sex memoirist, um, former dominatrix, and now I'm setting up something called the Ethical Porn Partnership. So yeah, sex is my business. But actually sex isn't my business. Instead, my business is politics, it's law, it's legislation, it's education, it's culture, it's media. And so um, when I invited some friends to this event tonight, I you know, put the post from Facebook and tweeted about it. And I had so many people come back to me and say, oh, it couldn't possibly. And I, I was like, what? What do you think you're coming to? And they really thought they were coming to an orgy. <laughs> so I want to say now, I'm really sorry if you thought you were coming to an orgy. <laughs> but also good on you for coming to the orgy. You know? <laughs> it's kind of impressive to turn up. But um, it sort of really crystallised for me when, um, in particular, my friend Nick Cohen, who I'm sure you'll know, who's the observer journalist, said to me, I couldn't possibly, Nikki, I couldn't possibly be seen at such an event. And has gone on Radio 3 talking about uh, social or something like that instead. And he said, uh, and so I asked him to tweet about the event at least, and he said, oh, no, I can't think about sex at a time like this. And I sort of lost my temper and was like, FFS, it's politics, it's culture. When are people like you, who have got a lot of influence and power in the media, going to take us seriously as a topic to be thoughtful about? And so somebody like a liberal Anthony Cohen can't do it. It, it, isn't, it isn't really, you know, set the right agenda and doesn't kind of go that well. But we're going to try here tonight, and you guys are all here, which is incredibly encouraging, and I applaud you for turning up and not being afraid of coming to the audio or anything else that you thought you were about to attend. So just to tell you a tiny bit about me, I write about sexual politics for The Guardian and The New Statesman. Um, I wrote a book called Bound to You last year, which was an erotic memoir, completely true. Actually, the truth was actually far darker, darker and filthier, but we had to censor it. Uh, but it, it's pretty true, it's got my real name on it, and I confessed a lot of things that did really happen to me. Um, and now I write the sex column for Men's Health magazine, which is very interesting because I get to negotiate with men about how to give women the sex they want. That's my agenda anyway, even if they think it's something else. Um, and so, you know, did anybody here see the Porn on the Brain documentary on Monday with Martin Dolby presenting it? Yeah. Okay, so for me, that epitomised everything that's wrong with sex in the media. Um, it was scaremongering, it was bad science reporting, it was hypocritical. It was unethical, the treatment of the, of the young boy they interviewed who felt compulsive around porn viewing. And, um, and it made me feel really kind of all the more um, adamant that I would come here tonight and try and help set the record straight with these amazing speakers that I've got who are going to share their real knowledge and real facts and real science with you. So um, I'm going to hand over to Arita Prasad. She's a biologist, she's a speaker, she's what I would call a media educationalist, i.e. she sets the record straight. Um, this is her wonderful book, which you can buy here, <laughs> Like a Virgin, How Science is Redesigning the Rules of Sex. And um, she throws up some very interesting moral questions about how reproductive technology is potentially going to change our attitudes to family, to relationships, to how we organise ourselves in society. And I have to just give one anecdote, and I really hope that I don't embarrass her here yet. But she is also, she doesn't know this, I used to be a dominatrix, so I know a lot about men's sexual fantasies. Um, stuff that I can't possibly forget. Um, and um, Arty was actually named as one of like the most delectable kind of like dumb fantasies for people because she'd effectively written a book that gave credibility to the idea that we didn't need men anymore. So I just, you know, I had to put that out there. <laughs> so that's how you, you have this kind of role that you don't know about Arty, but I just wanted to tell you I felt it was like obligation to pass on the knowledge. <laughs> but anyway, without any further ado, please give a round of applause to Arty for that.